next year will be used to launch what they call the Great Reset Initiative. The forum saying, quote, the time to rebuild trust and to make crucial choices is fast approaching as the need to reset priorities and the urgency to reform systems grow stronger around the world. Right. Joining us now is Victor Davis Hansen. He is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University and a National Review contributor. Uh, mm -hmm. Professor, great to see you. Um, so the World Economic Forum is a group of uh, global elites. These are super rich people who fly into a rich emphasis on super rich. Chopper in on private uh, helicopters. Um, these are people who then attend a bunch of lavish parties. They're inherently out of touch. I mean, I Time Magazine said it's a reunion for the people who uh, broke the modern world. I, I happen to think any time you get George Soros and Mark Zuckerberg and Greta Thunberg in the same room, it's a recipe for Looney Tunes. But what is this great reset? Well, I, I might just respond to your comments by saying if you just had a pledge to park for 1,600 private jets and come commercial air travel or by train, it wouldn't be a doubt because they wouldn't put up with it. But <laughs> what the Green Reset is, it's a bunch of global elites, as you said, and they have two uh, protocols or two themes. One is that their credentials or their education or their inherited or made wealth make them elites and allow them to talk down to people and, you know, by top-down measures dictate to people in a non-democratic way what's good for them. And second, their power and influence and wealth mean they're never going to be subject to the ramifications of their own ideology because they're going to ah. capitalism made them wealth, but they don't want capitalism for anybody else. They want to close the attic door so nobody climbs up after them. And so that's what how they operate. But basically, for all the different issues they have, open borders, identity politics, the, the main the, the gem of their entire uh, ideology is climate change. And it's very ironic because in the United States, not under Donald Trump, 2019, we have the lowest carbon emissions, I think, since 1992. So free market capitalism and the conversion from coal to natural gas gave us smaller or fewer Go carbon figure. than we had in almost 30 years. And I don't know what the panic is when we're doing so well to... to uh, lower those emissions, and this is at a time when we were being lectured by Europe, and yet we have about $25,000 higher per capita income than Europe does. We have an economy wow. 1.7 times larger, even though the EU has a larger population. So we're, we're creating prosperity and maintaining, at least before COVID, and yet we're still lowering emissions because we're letting individuals and the entrepreneurial system find solutions. Wow, that must than piss a, them off. Mandate or dictate, and I don't think they like that. They don't have any control over it. Yeah, they foreign counterparts, Greg, of what Gavin Newsom and remember Hillary Clinton said that we can't never let this serious crisis in this case, the lockdown and the virus, go to waste. Newsom in relationship to making progressive capitalism even more progressive, and Hillary for uh, health nationalist health care. But all of these people should admit that there's no popular support for their agenda and they have to manipulate people's fear in a crisis to push it through. You know, uh, Professor, I always read your columns, I've read your books. Uh, your latest column persuasively argues that China is anxious for and almost giddy over uh, Trump's departure from the White House. Is that because China views Joe Biden as a way to return to their sort of long-standing uh, habits of abusing uh, America and harming the U.S. Yeah, I don't think it really it really doesn't matter, Greg, what you say or I say. It's what what they say. We got that wonderful excerpt. I think it was from Professor John Chen, where he laughed and said, "The Bidens are back. Wall Street is Wall Street is back. The establishment is back. Hunter is back. And now we've got our team running the government." What he meant was. Asymmetrical trade, patent infringement, copyright, uh, theft, technological appropriation, dumping, currency manipulation, and then the propaganda campaign that says if you push back, you're racist or nativist or xenophobia, and then controlling you in the World Health Organization, and all for what? 
for really the most autocratic, dictatorial, racist country in the world to proceed on this idea of world hegemony. The Everything he produce so is produced with slave labor. All, initiatives, this all the Nikes you wear, slave and what, labor. The bottom line is, Greg, they're very cynical. They feel that they can get away with all this because whether it's a uh, Mike Bloomberg or the Disney Corporation or Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or the NBA, they have people, Hollywood, they have all of these institutions and influential people that have got very rich in China. And, and we have, they've got a third of a million students here that are infiltrated, if I could use that term, into all our major uh, universities that are doing all of this research with American researchers. Now, a week goes past that you don't find somebody arrested from China for technological or espionage uh, appropriations, some side. At my university, we just arrested somebody who was a visiting professor employed by the Chinese military. We just found out we didn't report $64 billion, $64 million in gifts from anonymous Chinese donors. We just found out another research team's uh, facial recognition was used by the Chinese government to monitor ethnic and religious dissidents. So they're, they're deeply embedded in all of our institutions. They're doing a lot of cheers in China with a change of administration. Victor Davis Hansen, great to see you. Thanks so much. Wow. You know, that means that $64 million of unclaimed money. You know, right now they're saying that Hunter Biden did not claim, forgot to claim for tax purposes an amount of money that is more money than 99% of the people make and pay taxes on in a year. wonder how that's going to play out.